Hi, I'm Jim Pike and welcome to MathCraft. This being the first episode, I think I should tell you how MathCraft was developed. Um, it was for my class in South Central LA um, and my students were 90% first generation American. I mapped out my lessons based on the benchmark assessments that we take three times a year. As you can see, the first time we took it in September, my class got an 18%, showing that they were ready for third grade standards. I began teaching with MathCraft in January. Two weeks later, we took the mid-year exam. We went up to 42. And if you look carefully, the one section that really lit up was area and perimeter, the very subject I taught with MathCraft. They took their final assessment in May just five months after the implementation of the program and hit an 84 with six questions in the blue and one standard strand also in the blue. That's above 90 percent. The lesson you're about to see played a huge part in building the conceptual and procedural knowledge needed to master three of the standards mapped out by the benchmark assessment. The standards targeted for this lesson are 3 MD measurement and data D8 and that one has to do with solving perimeters. There's also three OA, Operations in Algebraic Thinking, C7, which shows the relationship between divisions and multiplication. Uh, the last standard we targeted was three OA D8, which has to do with multi-step problems. So without further ado, let's get into algebra architecture, the Parthenon. Lesson 1, Whole Class Instruction. Tell your students, if you just know the variables, the length, width, and height of the columns, you can build the Parthenon in Minecraft. Choose any three numbers, and you can find the perimeter, the area, the number of blocks needed to make the columns, the total blocks that are used in the structure, the stairs that are added to decorate the structure, and the total materials, which are total blocks plus stairs. You start the lesson by writing the six formulas that make up the algebra puzzle on the board. Give the kids a length, width, and a height, and see if they can solve the algebra puzzle within seven minutes. Come to think of it, that's a great idea. You should try it too. Pause the video and make a hypothesis. Come back when you're done. So let's open a single player super flat world and take a look at the blocks I like to use. I like emerald, chiseled stone, redstone, gold, iron, lapis lazuli, and diamond because they have dark edges. As you can see over here, um, if you have wool blocks, they all kind of blend together. But if you use blocks with dark edges, you can easily count them. See, like that one's three, and that kind of looks like one piece. That's a good trick later on with fractions. I'd like to start with my favorite formula in the game, the perimeter. Do you notice how it's different from the formula for perimeter that we normally use? If you guess that I have it in the communicative property of multiplication and there's a random minus 4 at the end, you'd be right. But let's take a look in Minecraft. Is that minus 4 random? Now let's build our perimeter. Our length was 7, so let's lay 7 blocks. Can you count them? Now our width is 5, let's lay 5 blocks. Can you count them? Do you see my mistake? Take a look. Can you find my mistake? Let's go back and check our work. If you count the width carefully, you'll see that it's six blocks long, not five as asked. If we were to continue down the, this pattern, our rectangle would look like this. It would be six by eight, not seven by five. This mistake would drastically change the number of blocks that are to be counted. Now let's build the correct perimeter. As you see, I am laying five blocks. Can you count them? And now I will lay seven blocks. And now I will lay another five. One, two, three, four, five, five. And now I'll finish it off. 
and voila, a perfect 7 by 5 perimeter. Now take a look at the corners as we count them. Do you notice that they're in green? That's because we count the corner blocks twice. They are both used for the yellow side and the blue side. So that's our minus 4. It's the regular formula for perimeter minus the four corners because they are counted twice. This is an opportunity to bring up non-standard unit of measuring. Because in Minecraft the unit of measuring is cube and there's going to be, it's going to be measured a little bit differently. Let's show you how to show your work in Minecraft by using a sign. Um, I was at first nervous to uh, give the kids orders of operation algebraic expression until the signs came about and I realized that they can show all their work and because orders of operation make the, the writing of the problem so compact, it was kind of like a tweet and they kind of got into it. So they started off by writing the formula first, then they plug in the numbers and then they go through it step by step and you arrive at how many blocks are in the perimeter. This was an important assessment piece because uh, in order to make the sign the kid had to know how to do the problem and show their work. Also for those of you who are worried about giving incorrect formulas to your students, please use rulers and compare how to do perimeters in the real world and how they're different from Minecraft. That is a very very important step on this because it teaches compare and contrast skills, how videos are different than the real world, and most importantly, formula creation. The kids will see how they are formed and why they are different, and then they'll be able to come up with their own formulas. Also, compare this formula to other uh, perimeter formulas. There's quite a few of them, so have fun with that puzzle. On to our next formula area. It's pretty simple, just fill it in. Uh, one thing I like about the using area in Minecraft you can use it just to answer any kind of multiplication problem so I used it for teaching word problems somebody made so many cookies and that many batches and then they just build an area um, then after we build the area we make our sign they plug in the formula they plug in the numbers they plug in the answers so now we know we have an area of 35 and a perimeter of 20 now let's take a look at our next formula columns. So C stands for how many blocks are in the columns. Now according to orders of operation we have to do parentheses first which is perimeter divided by 2. Then we multiply that answer by H, the height of the columns, not the height of the structure. So now let's do the steps in Minecraft. First things first, we need to know how many columns um, we're going to be building on. So if you take a look, I am putting a block down on every other uh, block in the perimeter. So half the blocks on the perimeter have a column on it and half don't. Therefore we have perimeter divided by two. You can see we have ten columns. Each column is going to be three blocks tall. So we have three blocks ten times. 3 times 10. There will be 30 blocks in our columns. Making sticks like this is another way to show multiplication and division in Minecraft. It could also be used on other kinds of word problems. Now that we've derived uh, how many blocks are needed to make our columns, we make a sign showing our work as always. The next thing we're going to do is build the pop-up roof. We're going to start by building um, a perimeter around the top of the columns. Um, and the idea of the pop-up roof is it pops up. So to build it, what we're going to do is once we complete the perimeter, we're going to put another block on the corner, put a block on top of it, and break the lower block. Pop. See how that pops up as we build the inner perimeter? And you continue this pattern until it goes all the way up and the roof is complete. As you can see that there will be the same amount of blocks on the area as there are on the roof because the dimensions are the same, the only difference is that the roof goes up. As we walk around and take our final look at this, this is going to be all the blocks that we are going to use to build it. The next part is the stair. So using the information that we figured out, the roof and the area are the same and how many columns we have, we can derive the formula total blocks equals two times the area plus the columns. 
So, as you can see from other completed structures, that there are two loops of stairs, one around the bottom and one around the top. To derive the formula for this, I started with what I know. I know the perimeter. So, I set stairs equal to perimeter and built it in Minecraft. This picture shows that there is one stair on every block around the perimeter, creating an equal amount of stairs to the blocks in the perimeter. Now let's take a look from the corners. As you can see, two more stairs are needed to complete um, each corner. So two times the four corners is eight. Whenever you need to make an outer perimeter in Minecraft, all you need is the formula perimeter plus eight. It's really cool. Um, if I wanted to build a fence around the stairs, it would be stairs plus eight. Take a look at our structure versus the ones in the background. It's still not complete yet. What's missing? That's right, the upper loop of stairs, which would make the formula for stairs finally two times the answer of P plus eight. Once again, another two-step problem. And as always, we make our signs. Now we're almost done, but I think I should give you a brief tutorial on how to place stairs. Where you put them down matters. You need to be facing the block you're looking at and aiming at the bottom part of it. As you can see, if you put it up, on, if you aim up top, the stair is going to come upside down. So you have to be diligent about making sure you're aiming at the bottom of the stair that you're looking directly at. Um, I'm going to make a few more mistakes for you, like I'm going to place it on the side of a stair, and you see how it comes in funny, not the quite shape we, not the shape we want it. So the best thing to do is to use your A and D keys, walk along uh, the perimeter, and place the blocks. So now let's finish up our structure and add our second loop, uh, perimeter plus eight times two, and we are finished. We just need to derive our last formula, which is how many materials we used. We used blocks and we used stairs. So let's uh, make our sign for that. We had 100 total blocks and 56 stairs, so we needed a total of 156 materials to build our Parthenon. You're done with the uh, puzzle and you know the answers. See how they do again on the post uh, assessment. Give them the algebra puzzle again and see if they can do it in a 7 to 10 minutes. Uh I taught this lesson over the course of a week. I broke it down into three days. I taught perimeter and area the first day, columns and total blocks the second day, and um, stairs and uh, materials the third day. After that week, they got comfortable with the, the algebra, the puzzle, so they didn't really need the Minecraft to back it up. And the algebra puzzle became our math warm-up. It really helped with their ability to multiply fluently and work through two-step problems. Um, for example, if I saw that the class was having trouble with their seven multiplication tables, I would make length, width, and height all seven, and it would really give them a chance to practice it. Have the kids next choose their own length, width, and height, and build their own perimeter uh, Parthenons in Minecraft. Um, in an upcoming lesson, I'll show you how to open up a server and have the kids all go into the same world. Have them know how many materials they're going to need to build their Parthenon before they get to play. Have them build their Parthenon and when they put down their signs and all the materials are correctly on their sign, uh, reward them with diamond swords and enchanted armor and dynamite and other things that are fun to blow up and play with. And build a boy's flag and a girl's flag and let them go at it in some fun 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 pvp and they will go to the greatest lengths and work so hard for you uh, because they'll be so appreciative that you let them play what they want to play and you let them learn the way that they want to learn in minecraft hands down the biggest effect that minecraft has had in my classroom was the change in the academic culture the students wanted to learn like never before. It excited their curiosity and it just spread to other subjects, even when we, the ones that we didn't use Minecraft with. Thank you so much for your time. Please let me know how this lesson went in your classroom 
and check us out at Learn by Gaming for more on MathCraft or anything else DGBL.